Hello, everyone. Uh, today we will talk about lecture number 18. And our topics are going to be basically the lymphatic system that we, we mentioned at the end. And uh, uh, right now we will talk about the immune system. All right, so talking about the immune system. <clears throat> okay, the immune system are a group of organs, tissue cells, that are going to produce what we call antibodies, antibodies. So what are antibodies, right? That they're going to differentiate cells who differentiate the self from the what is not you and neutralize potential pathogenic organisms or, or substances. All right, so we are going to just start talking about what could be the the organization of the immune system. All right, so I'm going to start doing some uh, some remarks here. So let's imagine that you have a country. You have a country. So kind of country. Okay, so this Texas looks like a... <laughs> I don't like Texas, but I'm trying to draw United States. Okay, something like that. All right, so here we have actually a country, and this country are going to have boundaries here. These boundaries. The boundaries are going to be the borderline of the country. Okay. Then uh, we have uh, here uh, in the country, we have these these defenses, line of defense, are going to be called the first line of defense. Imagine of some enemy are going to attack our country, and there is definitely, you see, that the first line of defense will be the boundaries, the first line of defense. What is in the equivalence in our body will be the skin. The skin. The skin. Yes, the skin will be the first line of defense. Number one, that is what we call first line of defense. All right, so this first line of defense will be not only the skin, but it's going to be the mucus, it's going to be the hair, it's going to be your eyelashes, your nails, uh, everything that is covering your body, everything that covers the genital area, the mucus of the genital area, everything that covers the mucus of the mouth. Let's go more. Yes, it's more. So what is coming next? The first line is still being the respiratory tract, the respiratory tract. If you remember in your first or second lecture, we was talk about the pseudo stratified epithelium, where we have the, the goblet cells that and the cilia, right? Remember that? So pseudo stratified epithelium. So all this lining of the respiratory tract will be a first line of defense. First line of defense. Another line of defense? Yes. We have more? Yes. What it could be? The GI tract, the GI system, especially the GI tract. GI system is everything, right? GI system, you remember, is the GI tract plus the accessory organ. We are talking about the GI tract. The GI tract is the lumen, the lining of the, yes, the lining of the lumen of the GI tract. And we have what? Especially the gastric acid, gastric acid, gastric acid. So the first line of defense of our country will be the skin, the respiratory tract, the GI tract, the genital area, the oropharyngeal area, the mucus of the conjunctiva of the eyes, all of them are going to be considered the first line of defense. Are you okay with that? First line of defense, as I mentioned here. Now, let's suppose that the enemy are going to put enemy like, uh, let's put it like uh, purple, all right? Enemy is trying to get into the country and they find our first defense, the first line of defense. Skin, hair, nails, uh, conjunctiva, uh, mucosa genital, mucosa of the oropharynx, uh, respiratory tract, and the GI tract. So let's suppose that 
there is somehow the actually can pass the, the first line of defense and they are going to get inside the country inside the country so here is inside the country from all the 50 states that we have you're going to have different uh, bases 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 base one here base two base three base four base five so we have distributed bases bases of soldiers right because you see in the street the soldiers are not all of them out of the uh, uh, patrolling uh, the country how many soldiers we have in the united states we have about one million i believe one million soldiers or a little bit more i guess and uh, these are distributed in bases so they are not actually walking on the street all right so what happened when the uh when they are actually the enemy is going to cross the is going to cross the uh the boundary in this case what is going to happen is that the bases are going to wake up for example if the enemy is getting here from the southwest here in this area so this is the base who are going to react first this is the base who are going to release all these uh, uh, white cells that are waiting for the alarm in the tissues so remember each organ like a state in the united states are going to be having bases bases these bases are going to be a lot of soldiers which soldiers are going to be there they're going to be all the white cells the monocytes basophils the lymphos the lymphocytes the neutrophils and the eosinophils eosinophils so they're in bases waiting waiting until the alarm is coming and they are going to deploy they are going to get into the area obviously i put the bases all over the country why because because if you have an injury here or the bacteria or enemy getting here in the southeast they're not going to come a base from here are going to be activated a base that are close by close by correct so that is basically the secondary or second line of defense second line of defense second line of defense the second line of defense are going to be characterized basically <clears throat> by a, the second line of defense are going to be characterized but by the neutrophils neutrophils we have the basophils we have the eosinophils eosinophils and we have the monocytes the monocytes so what is the characteristic of the first line and the second line together so first line first line everything that is outside on the surface of the skin second line of defense when the is inside your body inside your body reacting the second line of defense and the first line is what is on the cover of your skin your body the second line of defense as well the first line of defense are no specific no specific no specific no specific or unspecific whatever you want so no specific means no specific for what no specific for bacteria for antigen bacteria bacteria so for example doesn't matter if the bacteria is like this doesn't matter if the bacteria is long doesn't matter if the bacteria is like this spirillus so they, they don't care what size or what shape is the bacteria or the virus there's no specific so they don't discriminate so i don't know you i'm going to just kill you right so that is what is doing in the second line of defense that is a non-specific uh, no specific attack so they don't discriminate it's bacteria a or b or c or d no matter what bacteria it is color size uh, name whatever so it's bacteria stranger 
period. That is going to be destroyed. That is the second line of defense and the first line of defense. First line of defense and second line of defense are no specific, no specific immune system. You okay with that? Okay. So number three, we have a, so we have a first line, we have the second line, and now we have a third line of defense. The third line of defense, and I'm probably going to make it more uh, organized here, the, the writing. Okay. Come on. Yeah. All right, so the first line of defense we are going to have the first line of defense, first line of defense. We have the second line of defense. And we have the third line of defense. First line of defense are going to be the barriers, called barriers. What are those barriers? It's going to be the hair, nails, uh, hair, nails, uh, uh, a GI tract, uh, GI tract, respiratory tract, Okay, respiratory tract. We have the goblet cells with the, with the, with the what? With the cilia. And the GI tract. Basically, we have the, the uh, gastric acid, hair, hair, nails, conjunctiva, everything that is covered your body, are going to be the first line of defense. It's like a suit. You go to the outer space and you have a suit. Your skin, your your body, your surface of the body. All right, so. So second line of defense are going to be basically the, uh, the neutrophils, neutrophils, the basophils, the, uh, the what eosinophils, and it's going to be the monocytes, monocytes. We are going to see one by one, so we are going to mention in detail. The third line of defense are going to be the lymphocytes, lymphocytes, the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are going to be B and lymphocytes T. We are going to see that in the next few. So the first line and the second line, these guys are going to be what? No specific. Uh, no specific. And the third line is going to be S specific. All right, so how we can tell the third line is specific? Uh, just to remember, in the army, in, in the uh, army, we have a special forces, a special forces, a special force. The marines, the, the regular soldier, those are the second line of defense. They are going to kill no matter who it is, but it's an enemy, no matter size, color, whatever, they are going to kill that. But the third line of defense, basically the lymphocyte, they have a specific and determined targets, targets. So you have enemy A, B, C, and D. This third uh, line of defense are being uh, uh, produced to destroy, for example, enemy A. So between A, B, C, D enemies, they are going to destroy only the enemy A. The rest are not going to be destroyed. So that's why we call the third line of defense or a specific, a specific defense. You okay with that? So that is what we see here in the in this in this chart. Okay, so that is that is the beginning. All right. The immune system is more elaborate than we think. It's really they have uh, uh, five, some books considered five, six organs, and we are going to mention all of them. And we are going to make a tour on how this welfare 
is happening, how we are going to fight, what is the weapons we are going to use. So what do you want to be in this fight? So let's get in this fight. So you want to be a captain, you want a commander, you want to be a marine, so just make your decision. What is going to be your uh, your part in this in this war? And that's what we are going to talk today. There is main bases in our body, main bases. These main bases are distributed all over the body. So please, I want just you to remember this. The bases are in every single organ, in every single organ, in every single organ, okay? And one more thing, this lymphatic system or immune system are going to be the basis of immerse, immerse, immerse on the walls of the GI tract, on the walls of the respiratory tract. So all these monocytes, basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, lymphocytes are going to be immersed in between, in, inside the walls of the small, large intestine, esophagus, stomach, respiratory tract. So it's not just running on the blood. Don't think about that. Mostly of these cells are waiting for the alarm, waiting for alarm. Imagine that we are in a, in, in a risk for a war. Not all the army is, is walking on the street. We have the police, okay, the police is walking. And uh, I call this the, the macrophages, but anyhow. So they are going to be uh, uh, patrolling the, the, the city, the, the streets, right? But you don't see soldiers running or walking there. So part of that, so some of this army are going to be in the streets, but the majority of them are going to be in their bases, in their bases. Okay, so we have here the different organs. We have the bone marrow. If you read in the uh, left uh, view cartoon, bone marrow, B cells are produced by the bone marrow. Okay, so the lymphocytes are going to be produced by the bone marrow. Just remember, please, please, the bone marrow have as a function the hematopoiesis, hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis will have three components, right? They are going to produce the erythropoiesis that produce the red blood cells. Erythropoiesis produce the red blood cells, two million red blood cells per second. We have the white cells, the white cells, the production of the white cells are going to be about 1 million per second. And that is going to include, listen to this, the neutrophils, the eosinophils, the basophils, the monocytes, and the lymphocytes. So white cells in general are including, include the lymphocytes. And the last, and the last por portion of the, uh, of the what, of the bone marrow is going to be to produce, is going to produce platelets, platelets. All right, so bone marrow is part of the immune system. Why? Because are going to produce white cells. Okay, so bone marrow produce the white cells, white cells. Okay, so let's talk about the lymph, lymph glands, the lymphatic nodes. Lymphatic nodes. So this is number four, I can see here, lymphatic nodes. These lymphatic nodes, if you notice when you have a cold, when you injure your, your, your a finger or a toe, all right? So you will see that some small um, nodules or a small uh, bulging uh, around structures are arising from your armpit or they are going to be in your neck, especially when you have a cold, right? When you have a cold, it starts with, oh, what is this? Oh, I have some kind of balls there, right? So that is basically the enlargement of the lymphatic nodes. And we will talk about in detail. These lymphatic nodes are in number about 900 lymphatic nodes distributed all over the body, especially at the level of the articulations, the armpits, the, 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 the uh, flexures on the arm, on the knee, behind the knee, right? all the flexures around the aorta, around the IVC, lymphatic nodes. And we will talk about that in a few minutes. So those are bases, basically, right? So the bone marrow is a base where all the new cadets, cadets are going to come out from the from the training center, right? So 
to go to the training center. Lymphatic, the lymph glands or lymphatic nodes, lymphatic nodes are going to be basis distributed all over the body that produce actually or they contain lymphocytes. A spleen, a spleen in the previous classes, we was talking that a spleen is like a cemetery for the red blood cells. Yes, a spleen is going to carry, is going to run through the spleen blood blood what is doing the blood passing through the spleen the spleen is like you uh, you have a, we call the white pulp the red pulp i don't want to go in that but this is you have like a small basis inside the spleen it's like you have a gelatin and you have a lot of grapes the gelatin is going to be the spleen and the grapes are going to be these bases called nodules that are going to be in the spleen so what happened here, the spleen is going to filter, listen to this, the spleen is going to filter blood. The spleen filters blood, are going to filter blood, filter blood. The blood are going to pass oh, through these nodules. These nodules are going to be like the, the custom, like a, a, like a filter, where the blood is passing through these lymphatic nodes, and what happened? They are going to find out that there is a bacteria, the lymphatic nodes in that case are going to react, produce more lymphocytes to destroy the bacteria. Okay? So you can tell me a patient who has a splenectomy or resection of the spleen can lead into uh, increased risk for infections. Correct? All right, so uh, we have the spleen. Okay, so here we have filtered blood and distributes T-cells and B-cells. It's not clear, don't worry, we will get clear in a few moments. Tonsils and adenoids. So let me see if I have, uh, I don't have a picture of adenoids, but uh, it's, uh, okay, so let me do very fast this. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to have here, but, All right, so let me see. Uh, the noids. The noids. Uh, the noids. Let's pronounce. Adenoids. Oh, okay. No, I want video here. There you are. All right, so we here we have uh, basically it's, this is a good image. Uh, not the best, but it's good enough. All right. No, I don't want more decorations. There you are. So if you see this uh, blue thing, we have tonsils and adenoids. What are tonsils and adenoids? Okay, so homework, you go open, go to the bathroom, open your mouth and see yourself in the mirror. And what you are going to see there is two structures that are on the bottom of the, of the throat. That, are, that is the tonsil. So this is the uh, nasopharynx, this is the oropharynx, this is the tongue here. Posterior, we have the tonsils. But look at this, where is these adenoids? The adenoids, if you see, here is this portion that you see here. Let me see, where is my pen? Of course, upside down. No, here. This is this portion is the uvula, called the uvula, uvula, uvula. Uvula is uh, an extension of the soft palate that are going to be like a bell hanging on the posterior portion of your of your throat, right? So the function of that is to control swallowing. There is other discrepancies here and there. I'm not going to go on that, but the uvula is basically the uh, where is uh, above the uvula is where you have the adenoids, these adenoids. Adenoids, what are adenoids? So I'm going to draw here uh, a, a tonsil. A tonsil will be rounded to right and left, correct? And they are going to be basically having lymphatic nodes, nodes inside, similar with the adenoid. The adenoid is a gland here that is going to basically have a different no, nodes of lymphatic nodes. 
So these can, it's important because when they get enlarged, they can actually produce an obstruction of the airway and that produce some very special characteristic sound during the breathing. And these adenoids they need to remove in that case. Okay? All right. So that is another big base of the lymphatic system. Tonsils and adenoids. And I left the thymus at the end because that is the beginning of our story together with the first one that we saw, the bone marrow. Okay? All right. So here in this slide, you can tell that there is immune system is no specific and specific. The no specific will be the first line as a summary and review, first line of defense and the second line of defense. And the specific or acquired immune system will be the third line of defense. All right. So the no specific first line of defense, skin, GI tract, respiratory tract. Uh, no specific will be the, the second line of defense when the enemy already attack inside the country, inside your body, and that is going to be basically all of them except the lymphocytes. We call because the lymphocytes are specific. Lymphocytes are white cells, right? But are a specific target, so that's why a specific or acquired immune system. Okay, so here we have. Uh, I'm going to mention a few things here first. Let me go here. Uh, probably going to make this bigger. Give me a second. Let's uh, see, it's dark here. Okay. No. Doing machine. Okay, so if you remember here, uh, we was talking in the past about the bone and the red bone marrow and all that. And here we have the bone, a long bone, right? Here we have the red bone marrow, the red bone marrow, red bone marrow. And I'm going to measure about the thymus here, the thymus. This is the thymus. This is the thymus. So where is the thymus? So please, just try to touch your sternum here. And behind the sternum, behind exactly the sternum, is going to be the thymus. Thymus is huge, it's important, so you must remember that. Thymus. This thymus, when you are baby, the thymus is going to be basically almost the size of the sternum. But when you are adult, the thymus are going to get smaller. Or probably because the body grow faster, grow, and the thymus not, doesn't, are going to become a small size. It's like, look like a remnant, but still a very important structure. Uh, and the function is very, very important. Okay, let's go to the point. We have uh, the white cells. We are going to see uh, the lymphocytes. In the lymphocytes, the lymphocytes, and we are going to see like a collage, and then we are going to put together everything. The lymphocytes, we have two types of lymphocytes. The lymphocytes B and the lymphocytes T. The lymphocytes B, B, why are called B and why the lymphocytes T are called lymphocytes T. The lymphocytes B is called because they are coming from the red bone marrow, coming from the bone. The lymphocytes are coming from the bone. So what they are going to do, they are going to uh, grow grow, uh, growth and development. So means they, they get mature. So from the moment they born, they are going to get mature. And mature means that they are reaching all the enzymes that they are needed in order to produce the function. So be as a bone, get mature in the bone get born, born, and mature in the bone, the lymphocyte B. Now, what about the lymphocyte T? The lymphocyte T, they are going to born on the bone, in the bone, but they are going to get mature, where, you can tell me, in the thymus. 
in the thymus. That's why it's called the lymphocyte T. T is coming from the word thymus. Okay? All right. So here we have the thymus, and the thymus is yes behind the behind the what the sternum. So please don't confuse. This is not the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is going to be below the uh, larynx in this area. So the thyroid gland is here. This is different. That is the thymus. Okay. All right. Okay. So we are going to go back to then again. Okay, so, but let's start talking about the first line of defense, the bar barriers, and the second line of defense, the internal defenses. You already know that. That is not new anymore. All right, a specific, uh, so that is the uh, non-specific. That is primary and secondary. Uh, primary, uh, first line of defense, and the second line of defense. No secondary, primary. Second line of defense, and first line of defense. We have the specific defense that is the other group. We already passed the no specific defense, first line and second line. Now we are talking about the specific defense that is the third line of defense. For this, it's going to be two groups, the humoral, humoral uh, immunity and the cellular mediated immunity. Don't get confused, don't get uh, concerned. It's very simple. Humoral means fluid. So basically, these are these lymphocytes, specific defense is basically lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. The humoral are the lymphocytes B, B lymphocytes, and the cellular mediated basically are the T cells. T cells. So basically, they are going to be in the tissues, in the tissues, and the lymphocytes B mostly are like the police. Let's make it like that. So lymphocyte B is the police, mostly in the streets, right? Looking, patrolling, and doing what they need to do. Okay. So and the army, the 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 specialized forces uh, with special weapons and all that are the lymphocytes T. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So <clears throat> that is basically a summary. By the way, I forgot to tell you the saliva. The saliva is the first line of defense. You spit something, you have bacteria there. You have enzymes. You have enzymes there. You have enzymes. You are going to kill bacteria, especially and uh, immunoglobulin A. So this is no moment. We are going to mention that more precisely. All right. So second line of defense, we have different mechanisms that are going to be part of this reaction uh, when the enemy is getting into the country. So you are fighting basically street by street, half by house, right? And that is who is doing that? All the neutrophil, basophil, monocytes, and the eosinophils. So we have, number one, when the bacteria is getting into your tissue, the tissue is being destroyed. Some cells are starting to be killed. These cells are going to release local messengers. Local messengers, like, supposed to happen, right? So you, you have a war, so the enemy is coming, start to destroy things, you call, you make a local messenger, right? It's a local messenger of what? Prostaglandins. What is that? Alarm for, ooh, ooh, ooh pain, 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 and then, ooh, ooh, inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. So what is doing this? The pain is telling you that something wrong is happening. So you're aware that is something are doing wrong and the inflammation is the cells are going to be destroyed and they release histamine 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 so just to give you an idea if you are a cell and you have an allergic reaction you produce a lot of histamine so you become red right is the reaction that you have right when you have a lot of histamine and that is what we release in in the in the second line of defense. So the alarm is going to run, is going to um, to be on. The alarm is on, and that means release a lot of histamine. And the histamine, what is doing is produce a vasodilation. Histamine produces a vasodilation. When you are allergic, your 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 face is not red. 
you have allergic to some some something in the skin it's not red why is red because histamine do what basal dilation the vessels when they are basal dilated are getting closer to the skin and that is going to see, make you see the uh they're going to make you see the redness uh, in that area okay but that is not it so why why we need to see ourselves red what is the importance of all that well definitely it's a consequence of what is the function of this the consequence is going to be that uh, having basal dilation means that there is more space for more blood coming more blood coming because of this basal dilation are coming with more white cells coming with more white cells these white cells are going to be in bigger number in bigger number and they're going to fight against the enemy against the enemy okay so here we have redness and swelling increase of blood flow we already know that why right inflammation histamine uh, white cells phag phagocytes and pathogens listen this is question for the exam phagocytes of pathogens so inflammation are going to increase the phagocytosis phagocytosis you know phagocytosis uh, remember in the first lecture we were talking that this uh, passes transportation right you, they use energy phagocytosis and who is doing what is phagocytosis means eating who is eating the cell the cell is eating phagocytosis so this is a cell this is a cell and the cell is going to find something to eat so what is doing the cell is going to do this is going to engulf the the what they want to eat and eat it at the end they're going to incorporate the actually the a nutrient or whatever it is into the cell so uh, this inflammation that doesn't mean please this is question for the exam concept please that doesn't mean that the the phagocyte phagocytes phagocytes like the macrophages are more hungry no 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 they are no more hungry Fa macrophages macrophages it's not like they are more hungry they are not more hungry what is happening uh, what i say stimulate the ph phagocytosis stimulate phagocytosis stimulate phagocytosis stimulate phagocytosis stimulate phagocytosis is because with the more vasodilation are going to bring more number of soldiers more macrophages more macrophages and that is how this is going to work right so vasodilation promote the phagocytosis in, because it's going to bring more of these uh, white cells to fight against the bacteria interferon interferon is going to basically uh, interfere is the substance that are make produce to be produced is a communication between the the white cells they are going to tell okay be careful this guy is coming yes you need to be uh, you need to take care about this and some that so the cell is prepared to pre to prevent or to make it less aggressive the attack the patient the cell is receiving fever fever is very important fever Fever is in, uh, are going to promote even more vasodilation. Temperature, if put temperature in your body or any object, the the object are going to dilate like a balloon, right? You put a, a hot temperature, the balloon distends. So because with with heat, everybody everything is going to be distend in some in some in some way, in some amount. And a fever is going to promote to the phagocytosis. So it's going to uh, improve, it's going to stimulate the phagocytosis. So all these guys, we have first line, second line of defense, and we have the third line, the B cells and the T cells. Okay, another lymphatic organs that we uh, need to be aware is the appendix, appendix, appendix. Appendix is... It's an appendix of the of the cecum ascending colon uh, on the uh, right inguinal 
area, right? Right in inguinal area or right uh, iliac area, or call or we can call the uh, right lower quadrant, right? So that is the appendix, and the appendix basically there is the, uh, classically we don't talk about the appendix too much uh, unless it's appendicitis, but the appendix classically is not considered to have any function. But even though we have the uh, the appendix, they have a lot of lymphatic nodes in in the walls of the of the appendix, on the wall of the appendix, and is demonstrated that probably is a remnant of our past life. Why they say that? Because animals who are carnivorous, carnivorous, just meat, just meat, they have a very long appendix. And we were carnivorous at the very beginning of our evolution. Now we become omnivorous, so we eat everything, basically. And uh, so that means that we not depend only on meat, but we need, we can eat our cereals, grains, whatever, right? So that's why the appendix is getting smaller. So they consider it's a remnant of our evolution, our evolution. All right, so now here we have, in this picture, we have the spleen, as you see here. This is Mr. Spleen, Mr. Spleen here. And you have this, all this network, this green stuff. Can you see this green stuff all over? Okay, so that is the lymphatic system, lymphatic system. That is part of the immune system. Yes, it's part of the immune system. Immune system, as you told, uh, you we told, is the adenoids are the tonsils are the spleen, are actually the, what else? The the thymus, the thymus, the red bone marrow. We have the lymphatic nodes, right? And some nodes that are immersed on the walls of the GI tract and the respiratory tract. All right, so if you see here, this is the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is all in green. And this lymphatic system, we have, like, a, if you have, for example, you have uh, a, a 101 will be the arteries, a, a 280 is the, are the veins, and El Camino Real, let's consider the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system. The, the lymphatic system is going to be like uh, El Camino Real. So you go through El Camino Real, let's, let's drive El Camino Real. And in the middle of El Camino Real, we have a store. Store. That store. That is like a rest area. You see souvenirs, whatever you want. Or you, uh, a coffee, whatever. And then this is going to continue. Continue. And then the, in the middle of the, of the way, they have another area or rest area that are going to continue with the vessel. So that is a lymphatic vessel. We call this a lymphatic vessel. Lymphatic vessel. And the stops here, the stop, this stop, these nodules are going to be the lymphatic nodes. The lymphatic nodes. The lymphatic nodes. The lymphatic nodes. So that is basically the lymphatic system. All this, what is the lymphatic system? Lymphatic nodes and the lymphatic vessels. What is the lymphatic system? Is the lymphatic vessel plus the lymphatic nodes. So these nodes, what we have here is a lot of lymphocytes B and T. B and T. B and T. B and T. We have B and T. B, T. B, T. Now, if we have some stranger or bacteria coming all this way here, they are going to basically pass through the lymphatic node. These lymphatic nodes are going to react very, very bad. So this lymphatic node, we have about number of lymphatic nodes. Just remember this. Number of lymphatic nodes all over the body are going to be around 900 nodes 900 nodes okay so these 900 nodes mostly are located where they are located in the inguinal area inguinal they are going to be on the neck they're going to be in the arm armpit 
are going to be all flexures on your body, then around, around, around the IBC, around the aorta. So those are the lymphatic nodes. So mostly are located here in the armpit, 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 inguinal area, so inguinal area, inguinal area, and you have the neck here. So those are the lymphatic nodes. A node that is going to measure about two millimeters diameter, and uh, they're going to can, they can reach about two centimeters diameter. So those are not palpable, so you cannot palp. But when the nodule is more than two centimeters, uh, two centimeters, you will feel that some is some nodule appears into your neck. Some nodules appears into your neck. All right. So what happened here? Why they grow these lymphatic nodes? Because the bacteria or virus or whatever it is is running through the lymphatic vessel, reach the lymphatic node. We have the police there. It's like uh, actually. Uh, uh, the enemy is getting into a lymphatic node and what they're going to do. Oh, welcome. Hi, how are you? No, they're going to start fighting. And what they're doing is to call more B cells, more T cells. And they are going to basically reproduce more B cells and T cells in that lymphatic node. And then they are going to be enlarged. That's why the lymphatic node is enlarged. You okay with that? Okay. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so talking about the, uh, the lymphatic system, we are going to see how is this organized, but we need to finish with the, with the what? With the, uh, with the um, uh, immune system. Okay, so let's continue. For this, we need to, uh, before we start doing the whole, the whole story, we are going to need to know some terminologies, okay? Some terminology. Terminology will be here, the antigen. Antigen. Antigen is the AG. 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 Antigen, that's why it's AG. This antigen, antigen will be, for example, is going to be a bacteria. It could be a virus. Could be a toxin. Could be any foreign body, do not belong to your body. Antigen, bacteria, germs, viruses, fungus, protozoa, right? So all what is do not belong to your body are going to be called an antigen. And we have another concept that is called the antibody, the antibody. Antibody, antibody is AB. Antibody, A and B. Antibody, antibody. And the other name, the other name of that is going to be, don't forget that, is the immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin. We write it down like IG, immunoglobulin. So AB and IG are the same? Yes, completely yes. It's exactly the same. So we are not trying, there is no difference between them, it's just a different name. Potato, potato, whatever you want. So that is antibodies and immunoglobulins. And we are going to see how they are going to work in the next few moments. Okay, so let's uh, go one by one and then we're going to put the puzzle very, uh, I mean, uh, at the end we are going to put it together. Neutrophils, the neutrophils, oh, these guys. These guys, I call them the marines. These marines, these, these guys are marines, the ones who deploy first in the fight. So these are the first ones who deploy, yes. So those are the ones who are going to be second line of defense. They are going to be no specific. They are living on the bases in different organs of the body. They they can they could hear or see the the alarm of the inflammation the inflammation alarm right inflammation alarm the histaminic uh, uh, histamine alarm where it's coming the histamine from the cell who are being destroyed when you destroy a cell they release histamine and they are going to be a message for 
inflammation. Okay, so the neutrophils are these, I call N as neutrophils, N I call the ninjas. Those are, these are the ninjas. These guys, these guys are the most furious or more uh, uh, brave warriors that we have in our body. They don't care if the bacteria is 100 times bigger than him. They want to fight and they are going to try to kill. So what they are doing these neutrophils? If you see, just to show you, for probably last time here in your program, neutrophils, this is a neutrophil, and the nucleus is kind of weird, though. The nucleus, you see, you want the nucleus like this. No, but the nucleus is this, 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 and this. They have four nucleus? No, it's just one nucleus. All this is segmented. That's called segmented neutrophils. Are called the neutrophils, right? So, so that is the... the the, the what the nucleus and these are going to contain a lot of granules that's why it's called granulocytes granulocyte is a granulocyte this is a granulocyte because they have actually a, a granules what are these granules these granules are uh, enzyme uh, en en enzymes that are going to be having lytic lytic uh, lytic activity. Lytic means destruction. So what happened with these neutrophils? The neutrophils are going to have a bacteria here. The neutrophils start to phagocyte, phagocyte, phagocyte. This is the nucleus here, the nucleus, and the bacteria start to be here. Yes, it start to engulf, like open mouth, whoop, and swallow it. So, the, and then they are going to get incorporated inside inside the neutrophil. And these enzymes are going to be released and destroy the bacteria, are going to destroy the bacteria. Those are the neutrophils. These neutrophils are going to be uh, the marines. These neutrophils, they can kill 10 bacteria at the same time. That's what I call ninjas. Very nice, they kill with the right hand, left hand, right, foot, leg, neck, shoulder, whatever they, they, they do, they can fight with 10 bacteria, 10 bacteria at the same time. But this neutrophil become crazy. So there is a moment that they say, oh my God, I'm killing. Ah, I start to be like uh, old. <laughs> they have just the smell of killing and they're killing right and left, killing right and left without a stop, like a, a crazy, crazy soldier, crazy ninja. And they are actually doing so crazy things that they start to destroy even your normal cells. Yes, they are going to even destroy the normal cells. So what happened later on? These neutrophils, the nature would made it that in two, three days, they actually, you know what they're doing in two, three days? Because if they last too long, they are going to kill your own even cells because they become crazy for killing. And these neutrophils are going to last only two to three days because what they are doing in two, three days, they commit suicide. They are going to commit suicide. So these neutrophils commit suicide, suicide. So they are going to release all the enzymes that are in the cytoplasm of the neutrophil and produce the auto destruction of the neutrophil. So when the neutrophils are elevated, the neutrophils are elevated, elevation are going to be elevated in, please write down this, are going to be elevated, are going to be high here in bacterial infections. Bacterial infections. Bacterial infection is going to be low, is going to be low when you have a no complicated, no complicated viral infection. All right. So that is actually how we use the neutrophils. Neutrophils are very important to tell us if this an increase of the of the uh, neutrophils that is telling us that can be actually a, a, what we call an acute. And remember that, please. Acute infection, acute infection, acute infection. 
So that is what is telling you basic acute bacterial infection. That is what is telling you the neutrophils. Okay, acute bacterial infection when they are elevated. Okay, eosinophils, the eosinophils, eosinophils are elevated for other reasons. Uh, elevation basically of eosinophils when you have allergies, allergies, allergies. Allergies to what? To the high, to the, I mean, to the pollen, whatever, dust, whatever, cat, fur of the, of the cat, whatever. Oh, they're going to produce elevation of eosinophils. Eosinophils, how they are going to kill the bacteria, uh, how they are going to kill, is like a, like a, like stri stripers? No, stri oh my God, uh, it's, it's not, it's not a striper. It's, um, okay, I forgot, it's always that. It's like a, a, a sniper, no striker, a sniper. The sniper that they are going to hide and they are actually shoot a very specific target from the distance. That is actually our eosinophils, the eosinophils, the eosinophils. So the eosinophils, are, they have a lytic enzymes that make holes in the germ cells. It's like a shooting into the cell. So they are going to release these enzymes and shoot the bacteria. Mostly they are elevated in allergies, allergies, as I mentioned here. So right now, right, right now, these are neutrophils high in acute bacterial infection, neutrophils. Neutrophils, acute bacterial infection, elevation. Eosinophils, elevation is going to be allergies, some type of cancers too, but I'm not going to go on that. Basophils or mast cells. Basically, they call mast cells of basophils, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, so uh, the mast cells are going, as well as the basophils, we call some for academic purposes, we call basically the same because both of them are going to produce histamine. Histamine again, we're talking about histamine again. Yes, histamine. Histamine is an inflammatory substance, right down that. Histamine is an inflammatory substance. This histamine is going to be produced when you have some cellular damage, cellular damage. Cellular damage. The cellular damage, what is doing is produce the destruction of the cell membrane where the prostaglandins are formed. See, I told you in the past, you must know prostaglandins. Okay, so I'm, we already explained in detail very much about prostaglandins. So prostaglandins are going to be produced under the response of histamine. So histamine is going to be produced and histamine start to uh, activate the production of prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, a local messenger for pain, inflammation, clot, and mucus. So basophil for the exam, remember, are called the security guards. Security guards. So security guards, security guards, okay, it's an alarm, histamine, 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 give me histamine, histamine. So that is the security guard. Security guard find a problem, immediately are going to call for help. The security guard, the base of fields, the base of fields. Okay? Now, uh, we already talked about the neutrophils, high in acute bacterial infection, eosinophils, high when you have allergies. Base of fields are going to be when you have some um, injury or damage of the cell. Monocytes and uh, monocytes are going to be the macrophages. What is a monocyte? Monocyte is called the mouth fish nucleus because look at this, it looks like a mouth fish. So all these uh, neutrophil, uh, the white cells, they have some kind of funny shape of the nucleus. Uh, but I just want to mention that because I don't want you to see those are the enzymes that are going to kill the bacteria. No, these are, this is the nucleus. Okay, what is the monocyte? Monocyte is this, let me get, let's put it this way. 
This is a monocyte, and the monocyte M, monocyte M, when is being attacked or bothered by some stranger, the monocytes M are going to turn into huge monster. That is M again, the macrophage. Don't get confused with the basophils. M with M, M and M, N and M, N and M. Monocytes turn into macrophage, macrophages. Monocytes turn into macrophages. That is one of the most important cells because it's the presenting cell that we are going to see in a few moments. Okay, so that's it. All right, so we have the specific and the B cells, and I think that is the moment that we are going to talk about the whole scene simultaneously. Are you ready? So let's get started. I'm going to discard. I'm going to add one more page here. Oh, what happened? Insert. Okay. Two thirty-five. Okay. And one hour. Oh, what I'm doing? Insert. Looks right. Okay, until what time I was calculating. Okay. Mm, okay, perfect. All right, so let's start here. Look at this. You have, uh, we already talked all the antigen, we was talking about antibodies. I'm going to explain more antibodies because I want to make it clear. So what happened with this? Look at this. Okay. So let's make a bacteria. Let's make an ugly bacteria here. A bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. Bacteria like, uh, remember the E. coli? The E. coli, very nice E. coli, right? But we have like spikes here, remember? They call it. So this is our bacteria. I'm going to be bacteria. Uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to be called the antigen. Antigen, don't, for, don't get confused. Antigen is the bacteria or the virus. Antigen is the bad guy. Antigen, 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 antigen. So what is doing this antigen now? So the antigen is... Uh, an enemy that is coming by surprise, right? So you're not you're not to say, oh, the enemy is going to come. I'm going to get sick in in 13 days. No, you cannot say that, right? So basically, they got you by surprise. Any infection, you already know what know what is infection. Infection is invasion, reproduction. Remember, every 20 minutes, etc., etc., etc. So this uh, antigen is going to get into your body. Okay. Uh, we will talk about COVID-19. Yes, we can talk about COVID-19. Let's make it the antigen is called COVID-19. COVID-19. So what is doing the COVID-19? The COVID-19, this is bacteria. So I'm going to make a, some kind of virus. Virus with something like that, right? And the virus is the first time, like happened with COVID-19, right? It was a novel, 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 uh, novel virus, novel, like new, right? Didn't exist in the past. Okay, so because of that, it's like you are in a, in a war. This COVID-19 or this new enemy was bringing weapons that nobody knew it. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew which weapons are going to use this, this new enemy. And because of that, we didn't know the weapons. We couldn't find any uh, protection because it's totally unknown, this, this weapon. And it was killing a lot of people without mercy, right? So that is what is happening when you have a first contact with a disease. All right. So then what happened? 
so what happened here is that the um, uh, this is going to start to destroy and destroy and destroy cells. So what happened? When you have an enemy that you don't know what is the enemy weapons, you make a special order. So you're going to try to kill only one of these enemies, just kill one of these enemies to start and study what weapons these enemies have. Who is doing this kill and who is doing this uh, this uh, first killing or the killing of the bacteria to show to try to study? That is the macrophage, the macrophage. So the macrophage, oh, what happened? The macrophage is this is a macrophage here, a macrophage that previously was a monocyte. Remember, monos you bother a monocyte. The monocyte become upset, become monster, and become a macrophage. 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 So this is what we call the presenting cell. Why is called presenting cell? You will see in a few moments. All right. So what is happening is this: they are going to eat one of these viruses or bacteria, and then they are going to present they're going to present to the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes. Okay? Now, before we get into that, I need to tell you the a small story of the lymphocytes. Look at this. We have the lymphocytes, the classification of lymphocytes are going to be lymphocytes B and lymphocytes T. The lymphocytes B are going to be the B memory cells, the B memory cells are going to be the plasmatic cells, plasmatic cells. These plasmatic cells, what they are going to produce are producing antibodies or called the immunoglobulins which immunoglobulins is the G, the A, the M, the E, and the D, game D. That is the lymphocyte B, memory cells and plasmatic cells. The T memories, the T, the T cells, lymphocytes T, are going to be the T helper, or called CD4, cluster differentiation 4, we have the T killer cells, T killer cells, or cytotoxic cells. Cytotoxic cells. It's called the CD8. That is a uh, cluster differentiation eight. Why I put these names? Because in some textbooks and some webinars, seminars, you they are going to don't they they are not going to tell you CD4. They're going to tell you T helper, or they're going to tell you just CD4 or just T helper. Depends. So that's why you need to know this. So we have one, two, we have three. Three are going to be the T suppressor. T suppressor. And before that, I go into T suppressor. Suppressor or regulator. And here we have the T memory cells. The T memory cells. Okay. All right. So here we have this all. That is all about lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are going to communicate between interleukins, etc., etc. <clears throat> we don't care about this moment. <clears throat> but what happened is this. When the bacteria, let's make a bacteria, when the bacteria is getting into the cell, into the body, sorry, when the bacteria, this is bacteria, bacteria, so they have a t-shirt said bacteria. So bacteria are going to be a, in the bloodstream. So what happened? The body do not recognize the proteins that are locate, located in the, in the what? in the cell membrane of the bacteria or cell wall. 
they, they, this is a stranger. We don't know him. This we cannot recognize. We cannot identify this guy. So they are going to send what we call the antibodies. Antibodies. What they are doing is these are going to make the antibodies. And please pay attention. These are, uh, plasmatic cells are going to start producing antibodies or immunoglobulins. And what they are going to do? They are going to stay and mark. They are going to mark. They are going to mark. And these, like uh, posters, they are going to say, kill me, kill. Another flag here, kill, to kill. <laughs> okay. So these are flaggings, to kill. So they said, oh, and what happened? They are actually the lymph the plasmatic cell antibodies or immunoglobulins are markers for destruction markers for destruction marking or markers for destruction what they are doing is just to mark for destruction they are not going to kill <clears throat> is that clear so they are not killing bacteria or viruses. They do not kill. They do not kill. They don't kill. What they are doing just is to mark for destruction. Mark, mark for destruction. So what does it mean, mark for destruction? They are going to mark and to flag, to make uh, evident that th this guy needs to be killed. And who is going to do that job? The job is going to be the T killer. That's why it's called T killer or cytotoxic. So that T killer is the one who are going to take over of the bacteria. The target is like airplanes coming through and then boom, bomb the bacteria. And actually, previous to that, you mark where was the bacteria, right? So where the, the surface of the bacteria. And that is how the immune system is going to work. All right. So, but let's continue. It's, I didn't finish yet. Okay. So now oh, you already know what are these antibodies. These antibodies that basically you can tell that is in the uh, in COVID nineteen, COVID nineteen, the um, the antibodies. These antibodies are going to kill. Are going to mark for destruction. Now these antibodies according to the vaccine. So before that, we have two types of memory cells, if you notice that very well. We have T memory cells and we have B memory cells. T memory cells and B memory cells. T and B memory cells. What is the difference between B memory cells and T memory cells? Basically, is the time. 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 Is the time. So these, memo these antibodies, uh, uh, these, uh, these memory cells are going to communicate the plasmatic cells that are going to produce these uh, antibodies. So, but these keep a memory, keep a memory. They are going to keep a memory, keep, keep a, mem a memory. This memory is going to last, depends, one year, two years. It's a short period of time. But if you have the T memory cells develop, the T memory cells develop, they're going to be up to 10, 15 years. So you have a boost every 10 years, 15 years. So 10, 15 years, it's a lot. And sometimes for, uh, for life, for example, hepatitis A, hepatitis A is basically happening in children uh, more commonly. It's like a cold. You don't know that you have hepatitis A. It's like feel like a cold, and you never had hepatitis A anymore in your life, for example, right? So why is this? Why is that? Because the B memories in COVID nineteen, for example, COVID nineteen, uh, there is a lot of unknown things that we we need to clarify or to study more. Uh, mostly of what we see here is that they produce a lot of B memory cells. A lot of B memory. There is not enough time of trials that it can indicate us that they are producing T, mem T memory cells. The T memory cells they can last for a long period of time. 
for long periods of time. And we don't have evidence yet that these vaccines are going to be effective in the long run. So that's why it's recommended to do the, uh, the what? The, uh, the third dose. Yes, the third, or the booster, right? By the way, my booster is going to be very soon. Okay, all right. So we okay with that? Okay. All right, so please pay attention to this. Okay, you have a bacteria, bacteria getting into your body, bacteria, okay? And the first thing is going to happen, they are going to, first of all, they, the first line, oh God, first line of defense is being broken. So the bacteria is getting inside your body, inside your body. And that is the moment where it's coming the neutrophils, the ninjas, neutrophils. They live three, two, three days, they kill phagos, the phagocyte, right? They are going to be elevating in acute, in acute, uh, acute bacterial infection, right? Neutrophils. We have the basophils, uh, basophils that are the security guard, security guard. So these bacteria, what they are doing is to destroy cells because they are like uh, animals trying to look for a prey. And the bacteria, they need invade us because they want, they are not going to, oh, yes, a tour, no. They want to eat or kill prey, kill cells and eat what is inside. So this is the basophils, are the security guard. So as soon as one cell is being, tried, is being destroyed, they're releasing histamine because the basophils release histamine. Histamine. All right, I'm going to put it here. Okay. I'm trying to make it a mess. Neutrophil. Acute bacterial infection when it's elevated. We talk about the basophils when this actually an inflammatory process running on. So they are going to release histamine, release histamine. And when they are going to release histamine, when this bacteria is destroying a cell, they are going to kill the cell. There is a kill there and release histamine. And that act, the basophil detect that, release histamine, alert, alarm. And histamine, what it's doing is to uh, initiate the inflammatory process. Inflammatory process. Inflammatory process. So these inflammatory processes are going to produce the vasodilation, are going to increase the phagocytosis, more white cells to the area of fight. Are you okay with that? Then we have, uh, what, do you, what do we want? Uh, we have the eosinophils, the eosinophils, and these in, uh, eosinophils are like the, Sniper, sniper, right? Sniper, yeah, a sniper are going to be basically shooting. They're going to uh, release enzymes, enzymes to destroy bacteria, uh, bacteria or other etc. bacteria. So, but when it's going to be elevated, eosinophils are elevated when you have allergies, allergies allergies or parasites, chlorochesinensis, ascaridiasis, fasciolasis, uh, many others, right? Immunoleptis nana, so many, many. So worms, worms and allergies, allergies to the whatever pollen or whatever pollution we have around. 
eosinophils. Then we have the monocytes. The monocytes. The monocytes are actually are going to be elevated. Listen to this. I forgot to mention in the previous. Are going to tell you that you have a chronic, chronic disease. Chronic disease. Chronic. Chronic. Yes. So you can tell acute. You know, for your, uh, you need to remember that we, what is the difference between acute and chronic. Okay, in 99%, 97% of diseases, acute is when you have a problem for less than three months. And chronic is more than three months. So what is the cutoff? The cutoff will be the three, three months. So everything that is acute is basically uh, less than three months. Everything that is chronic is more than three months. Rheumatoid arthritis, pain, that is chronic, right? You have gastritis, basically, if that is the first time you have it, that is an acute, right? Acute, uh, etc. So monocytes are chronic disease, are going to be elevated. And the monocytes, the monocytes, what they are doing is to transform into macrophages, 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 macrophages. So all these are happening, is that this is the second line of defense, the first line of defense was broken. The second line of defense is making action. But now it's going to come the uh, what is needed, the third line of defense. And how is it going to interact? There are going to be a connection between the second and the third line of defense. Those are second line of defense, all the neutrophil, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes, macrophage, and the third line of defense, the lymphocytes. And that is what we are going to see right now. Okay. So what I want uh, additionally to tell you, when the alarms are going to uh, to be here, to they are going to for all the bases, because all these neutrophils, eosinophils, are living in the tissues, in the bases. And only under the alarm is coming out and they go to the area of fight. Okay. So now... So what is doing here? So let's start. So here we have the lymphocytes. We have the lymphocyte. So interesting, huh? Lymphocyte T. And the lymphocyte T, we have the T helper. You must, this is a question for the exam. For final exam, T helper, CD4. Uh, cytotoxic. Okay, or killer. That is the CD8. Then we have the regulatory. The T cytotoxic. The T regulatory. Or suppressor. And the T memory cells. Ah, okay, T memory cells. T memory cells. For another side, we have the lymphocytes B, lymphocytes B, and the lymphocytes B, we have the, memo the B memory cells. They are not as effective as the T memory cells. T memory cells, long time. B memory cells, short time, one year, two years. And we have the plasmatic cells. The plasmatic, lymphocytes B turn plasmatic cells, and these plasmatic cells are going to send, produce the mark, markers for destruction. Markers for destruction. These are, each of these plasmatic cells can produce about 25,000 new uh, antibodies per, uh, per second. When it's needed. So we have A, B, or call I, G, markers for destruction, G, A, M, E, D. Another time I will tell you which is the most important, etc. Et okay. So it's not the purpose of this class now. All right. So we have all the elements ready. All right. So the first line of defense was broken. Then the second line of defense is coming. So they are going to find all the elements that we was talking before. Then 
what happened? The bacteria, because it's new bacteria, is killing us like right and left, right and left. So a macrophage, what is doing? A macrophage is coming. A macrophage is coming, and eat, eat the bacteria. They eat the bacteria. So it's like you have an enemy with a new weapon. We kill one enemy and we put it in a place and we study. Oh, this is her weapon. This is his weapon. This is this. This is that. How we can do in order to fight against this guy. So that is the first thing we do. And that is what is doing the macrophage. But then what is doing this macrophage is a presenting cell. Presenting cell. Why is it presenting cell? Because when they kill the bacteria, the pieces of the bacteria, they are going to send it to, they are going to send it to the T helper. T helper. T helper. T helper is actually the one who is going to receive her, to receive the corpse or the uh, the corpse or the dead body of the of the what? of the bacteria or viruses, whatever it is. Sorry. Okay. Battery. Okay, so that the helper. So that is the presenting cell. The macrophage that previously was a monocyte. The monocyte, when you get upset, monocyte or being actually bacteria, they are going to be transformed into macrophage. Macrophage is hundred no twenty five times bigger than the monocyte, and why is bigger? Because they can eat more enemies. That's why, right? So, and in one of these, they eat only one, and then they go. Uh, the macrophages are called the presenting cell. To whom? To the T helper. T helper. And you know what is doing the T helper? The T helper is going to tell. All oh, right, this bacteria is here new, right? I'm going to send orders to the B memory cells. I want to study this bacteria and remember for the future. So in the, in the, in the future, we are not going to be get by surprise. So as soon they are going to get uh, attacking us, we are going to react immediately. So listen to this. For the first, if the bacterial virus is attacking you for the first time, your immune defenses, your armies, your soldiers are ready to fight back in about two weeks. Two weeks. The army, when is unaware that attack is coming and is not prepared, ready for, for uh, return of the, the, the fight, they are going to take, we take about two weeks. We cannot wait two weeks sometimes because two weeks is too late. In two weeks, we are dead, right? So that is why the T helper, after the first encounter, they're going to ask the B memory, B memory cells to remember this. Even though it's a short period of time, but it's important, right? Because he's going to have ready the weapons in order to uh, protect ourselves. Then what happened? The tea helper, in addition, look at how nice is this, are going to send orders to the plasmatic cells. The plasmatic cells. What do we in the plasmatic cells? The plasmatic cells, what they are going to produce is antibodies. Antibodies, what they're doing, are markers for destruction. So the tea helper is going to basically order the plasmatic cells to produce more antibodies, mark for destruction. And then when they are, everything is marked, marked already for destruction, they're going to send an order to the T helper, to the, sorry, to the, uh, to the T killer cells. The T killer cells then are going to go and kill the bacteria here, kill the bacteria, kill the bacteria. So the T helper is going to send orders to the T killer or T cytotoxic cells. Then the T helper is going to send orders to the memory cells, the T memory cells. These T memory cells are going to make, uh, they are going to remember the event for many, many, many years, for many, many years. And that is what you, uh, what we do, the T helper. Then the T helper, when we are already winning the war, when we are winning the war, 
So somebody needs to tell us, okay, so we are winning. We won already. So everything returned to their bases. And who's doing that? The T helper is going to send an order to the T regulator or suppressor. To the T regulator or suppressor. The T regulator or suppressor. Okay? So you need to remember the classification of the lymphocytes. Lymphocyte B, memory cell, B memory cell, plasmatic cell, produce the antibodies or immunoglobulin. And the lymphocytes T are going to be four. The T helper, cytotoxic or, or killer, we have the regulatory and we have the T memory cells. So if you can tell, uh, we I, I should do activities in order to make fun, have fun, in order to remember this, but unfortunately we cannot do it because of uh, it's online, but nevertheless I think or I hope that it's going to be clear. So send me some comments after class or text me uh, if, they, if you need some clarification, please. I would like to uh, you to tell me a feedback, okay? Now, uh, all right, so this is the lymphocyte T. So this is, what is at your point of view, which cells of the lymphocyte is the pivot, is the one who send orders right and left to organize all your army, right? So you're right. Is the T helper. The T helper is the one who is going to give the um, all the, I would say, is the pacemaker, is the one to say, okay, let's do this, let's do that, you do that, you do that. It's a very much a commander. And that's what I was asking you at the beginning, what you want to be. Now, what you want to be? Tell me. You want to be a T helper or you want a T killer? You want to be a, a, a peacemaker, like the T regulator, regulatory. You want to be the T memory cell with long memory, long memory. You want the, the, the one who explore and start to mark for destruction, right? So remember, after you mark for destruction, are the T killers, the one who are going to kill the, the bacterial virus. And the B memory cells, just in order to start to remember the enemy weapons, right? So tell me what you want, okay? Now, I want just to mention a few things here, just to finish this part, is that uh, there is a disease that we know that is the HIV, 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 human immune deficiency, right? The HIV, the human, uh, human, um, human immune deficiency, HIV. And AIDS, AIDS is A I D S is the acquired um, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, right? And that is basically the same disease. So HIV versus AIDS. HIV HIV is when you have the virus HIV, and you don't show signs and symptoms yet. You don't have signs and symptoms yet. When it's called when uh, progressively. With the time, what is going down is your lymphocytes going down. Lymphocytes are going to start going down and down and down and down. At the beginning, for a space of seven, ten years, most likely you will not have any signs and symptoms. But after seven, ten years, the number of lymphocytes are going to be so low that you start having problems with a specific immunity. So you cannot fight against infections. So this patient to be asymptomatic means no signs and symptoms become symptomatic. And that is the moment the HIV patient is called now AIDS, A-A-A-I-D-S, -A -A AIDS, AIDS. You okay with that? All right, perfect. So one more thing I want to tell you is this. From all the virus is going to get into your body. The virus in one day are going to reproduce about 10 billion new viruses. Can you imagine a patient without treatment? No? 10 billion, and each virus are, have the potentially, potentially can attack other cells. This patient with HIV, which of all these lymphocytes you think is going to be attacked by this HIV virus? that explain the 
actually the deficiency of the of, of, of problems with immune system, so they start to develop infections. Yes, you're right. It's going to be the T helper. T helper. The T helper is the target of the HIV. So if they kill the T helper, basically we are beheading the immune system. There is no brain on the immune system because we are killing the one who is the people, the one who organize. And that is the T helper of CD4. So that is what happened in HIV. Okay? All right. So excellent. All right, so here we have uh, we have the immunity acquired artificially. Okay, so we are going to talk about the vaccine. Okay, the vaccine, we have active immunity, okay? And we have passive immunity. Active immunity, active immunity. So for example, uh, what are the vaccines they are going to they are giving you now? These vaccines, what they are doing is to go to the laboratory and kill the virus or the bacteria. They're going to kill the bacteria. So the virus is not active. It's, it's just inert body. And the bacteria is killed. So it's inert body. So they take a, take a piece of this um, uh, part of the protein of the bacteria or virus and put it in to your system, into your body as injection. So there is no activity of the virus because it's destroyed, it's just a piece of the virus only, or they can put you a uh, bacteria that is a piece of the bacteria. And what happened? The body is going to not able to recognize as part of your, of your immune cells. And what happened? What happened? They are going to come the macrophage they're going to be, first of all, the, the neutrophils. They're going to in, be the basophils, the eosinophils. Monocytes, no, because probably it's acute only, but it's still coming up. Temporary, but not as, as uh, uh, proportional as others. Then they are going to uh, come the monocyte, turn upset, turn into macrophage. They are going to eat the piece of the inoculated portion in the vaccine. They are going to present, is a cell presenting to the T helper. T helper is going to send orders to, it's simultaneously, obviously. So I need to be in certain order, but it can be, for example, number one will be the T memory cells and the B memory cells. Then they go to the plasmatic cells orders. Then they go, then after all this is already established, it's going to be, uh, the T killers or cytotoxic cells. And then at the end, when we are winning, is the suppressor, the suppressor. Now, when we are being attacked uh, unaware by, or by surprise, our system are going to take about two weeks, two weeks to be uh, starting the fight. But if you already have contact, like is in the case of the vaccines, okay, so artificially they make contact with that, you create already these T memory cells and B memory cells and specific antibodies. So you are ready with the weapons, ready on front of the door, waiting for the enemy and not ever get by surprise again by that specific bacteria or virus. And how, how fast is going to be reacting the body? Instead of two weeks, now it's going to be about a few hours to one day. So that is how fast they can respond our immune system if we are prepared with a vaccine. Active immunity is when they have this concept. They have a piece of the bacteria or a piece of the virus that is inactive or not alive and they are going to wait until the immune system is going to work to create your antibodies and your B and T memory cells. The passive immunity is what happened with uh, President Trump at the time. He was having COVID-19 and we was basically on the down of the, of the treatment for COVID-19. We didn't know so many things, right? So what they did is, uh, you know, this is COVID, a novel, COVID-19, 
attacking President Trump. Uh, uh, President Trump didn't have contact with this before, right? So the immune cells, the microphase and all that, are going to be ready to fight in two weeks. Two weeks. But was a was a president, we cannot have the risk, right? So what happened? They are actually doing other measurements. So what they did? So they was having already uh, some patients because not everybody die from COVID-19, but in COVID-19, a patient who survived, they took the plasma from uh, part of the blood and separate and filtrate the antibodies, the antibodies. These antibodies already are specific for COVID-19. So these antibodies are going, that is what delay us. If you don't have these antibodies at the beginning, you take two weeks to form. And then in two weeks, formally, officially, you start to fight directly against the bacteria, the virus. But in this case, it's not possible because it was, was the first time. So we cannot wait two weeks because the patient can be dead at that time. So what they did is to take the antibodies from other patients who already survived and put directly into the blood of the, of, in this case, the president. So the antibodies was actually helping, marking for destruction, the COVID-19, and kill the killer cells and was killing, they were, they was killing the, uh, the COVID-19 viruses. Okay? So that is the passive immunity, passive immunity. Passive immunity has the inconvenience that they administer some amount of antibodies. These antibodies are going to be gone in about a few weeks or even days. So that's why you need to have another dose of antibodies again and again and again and again. All right, so that is the difference between active immunity and passive immunity. So we have here the T helpers. Okay, we have uh, the the type of uh, we have the uh, T helpers. We have uh, so all the steps that we was mentioning, right? So they are going to recognize the type of antigen through the macrophage that is the presenting cell. They are going to be a order. They are going to order uh, to the B cells and the T killer cells and the T cells uh, orders from the. CD4 or helper, T helper. T helper is the one who is the commander. Okay, so let's talk about fever and inflammation. So I cannot ask you, you have any question? Uh, probably yes. So just uh, text me or we can do in the next review a, a more, uh, more precise what are any of your questions, okay? Fever and inflammation. Fever and inflammation. Fever and inflammation. So what is the um, thermostat of your house? What is the thermostat of your house? Okay, go homework. So put in the thermostat. See, check all oh, thermostat. Oh, this is a thermostat. And you put it there. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is actually the thermostat in your body. So hypothalamus is the one who controls the temperature of your body. Okay, all right. And just remember, it, uh, this temperature we, we want to have fever. Yes. What is the normal temperature uh, of the of the body? What is the normal range? You should know now. It's ninety seven to one hundred. Ninety seven Fahrenheit to to what to um, uh, two hundred uh, Fahrenheit. So that is the normal temperature range, temperature range for a human body. All right, so here we have some definitions that we need to uh, remember. Uh, we have uh, uh, inflammation. Inflammation for the exam, final exam, there is no concessions there. You need to know the five cardinal signs of inflammation. What are the five cardinal signs of inflammation? are going to be pain, redness, swollen, heat, and loss of function. Okay, so you can tell me the order you want, but you need to tell me the five of them. Okay, the five cardinal signs. And who are, what are the local messengers for this process? The local messengers will be 
the prostate glandings, prostate glandings. What are the four functions of prostate glandings? Are going to be pain, inflammation, mucus, and clotting, right? Okay. All right, so bacteremia. In bacteremia, what I want you to remember is uh, uh, bacteremia is the bacter is bacteria immune with blood. So is the presence of bacteria in blood. That is what this means, bacteremia. Sepsis is uh, basically uh, the definition is a, a multi-systemic multi infection multi-systemic, multi-systemic infection. So, how many systems we have? 11. So, more than one system compromise an infection that is called sepsis, okay? And septicemia, septicemia means in generalized infection or distribution of the bacteria in blood. So, infection of septicemia. So, that is the big difference. Infection is infection of the respiratory tract, infection of the GI tract, Septicemia is when you have infection in many more, more than two, two or more uh, different systems. Okay? Okay. For this, uh, I do need to remember this thing. Okay. All right, so we have inflammation. When you have, what is this? What is this? This, 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 Cell membrane. And you have an injury here. Injury. This injury, what is doing? Is releasing histamine. The histamine, they go to the cells and activate the phospholipase. <coughs> phospholipase enzyme and these phospholipase are going to produce the arachidonic acid arachidonic acid this is the second time third time we talk about this these arachidonic acid are going to be doing the leukotrienes leukotrienes what they're doing, the leukotrienes, the leukotrienes are going to call or attract white cells. So that is, a, this is going to be a local messenger already. It's a local messenger. Then we have another, uh, here we have the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, basically we have COX-1. So, all right, so I'm going to mention that before, after. We have for local messenger for pain, local messengers for inflammation, local messenger for mucus, and local messenger for what? For clots, okay? So that is what you must remember, must remember. All right, so there is a, two enzymes that is called the cyclooxygenase, one and the cyclooxygenase two is the COX one and COX two. COX one, COX one are going to basically inf make influence uh, influence on the pain. That COX one is an enzyme that participate in the formation of the local messenger for pain and a clot and a inflammation, uh, no, uh, mucus. And COX-2 is basically for inflammation. Inflammation. The aspirin, for example, the motrin, the motrin are going to have both of them. COX-1, inhibit COX-1 and inhibit COX-2. So that's why the aspirin or, or the motrin are going to cut the pain, inflammation, mucus, and clot. Okay, we have, uh, and I'm going to mention because uh, it's part of the class today, is I call the cortisol. The cortisol is just an anti-inflammatory. They're going to cut just the COX-2. Okay?
Okay, so probably it's too early to go on, on to this, but uh, but I will like just to mention a few things here. Uh, because, yeah, all right, so let's do it. So we have n states. So let's make it a motoring and the opioid. I'm not going to go into more detail. It's not needed. But basically, they, they want me to mention that. Motrin. Motrin is the ibuprofen, right? The ibuprofen, the uh, ecotrin, or whatever you want to call. The opioid is actually the morphine. The difference between NSAIDs, NSAIDs that are the motrin, the aspirin, motrin, aspirin, the uh, voltaren, the naproxen are going to be NSAIDs uh, are going to act in the peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system and the opioids are going to act in the central nervous system that is the difference between one to each other okay opioid is central and uh, NSAIDs the motrin Naproxen, aspirin, sulindal, meloxicam, piloxicam, keterolac, all those guys are going to be peripheral nervous system. Opioid is the morphine, 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 okay? All right, so uh, for this, I'm going to talk about the, um, you know what? I'm going to finish first this lymphatic system, and then we can go into what is needed. So this is endocrine, it's next class. So it's not it's not today. All right, so here we have the lymphatic system. So for this, and we're going to go to autoimmune disorders. Lymphatic system. Can you see here, please? Can you see all these pathways, El Camino Real, right? There are all the rest areas, the lymphatic nodes that measure two millimeters to two centimeters. And they're going to be enlarged when some bacteria is getting into El Camino Real and they found and they're going to pass through the custom of filters that are these lymphatic nodes. Okay, so let's start. Here we have this graphic, and for this graphic, I want you to pay attention to this. So where and how the lymphatic vessels are going to, they're going to begin. Basically, you see here, they're going to begin here. If you see, this is something that we already know. This is the artery. This is artery. This is the arteriole, the arteriole. This is the venule, and this is the vein. The blood is running in this direction, right? In this direction, like this. Like that, right? All right, so if you see here on the background, the background, we have uh, some tissue. Uh, they put nervous tissue, it could be a spleen, lung, kidney, whatever you want, but on the background. So here we have, in these areas, in the center, we have the capillaries. The capillaries, they have openings. They have openings. They have opening where the blood, where no, no, the, no the blood, the, wa the water, water, vitamins, and minerals are going to be released into the tissue. So they, the cells who are in the background can take those nutrients. So that is what happened. So it's at the level of the capillaries where you have that delivery of the nutrients and the minerals and vitamins, that delivery, that delivery. Uh, the arteries, arterioles, veins and venules are just transporting. So they are going to just pass. They are going to be in the way right on the way but the one who ultimately delivered the things and the door of your house is the other capillaries saying that we need to remember that here we have on the in between the in between these capillaries we have other capillaries this cap please don't pay a pay attention i mean pay attention this is a capillary too this green this green you see here like a cactus that is a capillary. It's called a lymphatic capillary. Lymphatic capillary or capillary. Lymphatic, right? And you see here, they are going to be, that is the beginning of the lymphatic system. That is the beginning of the lymphatic system. 
that beginning of the lymphatic system, the beginning of the lymphatic system is going to be in between the capillaries. So the capillary, the lymphatic capillaries are going to start between the capillaries of the arteries and veins. All right, and it's a cul de sac. One a statement, the second big statement. You can tell this lymphatic system do not have direct connection with the arteries, capillaries, or veins. They do not have direct connection. They are going to start in between them, but they are not going to be actually uh, direct connected to any of these structures. If you see here, this is a start, they start like a finger glove, like a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac means a street without exit, right? So that is where is the beginning of the capillary. This capillary, uh, I, I want to tell you, this, this lymphatic they have, the, is a vessel. And the capillary vessel, the capillary vessel, capillary vessel are going to have three layers. The tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia, similar as the vein. Why is it vein and no artery? Because this, cap, this lymphatic system, they have valves. They have valves. And what does it mean they have valves? They have valves that is telling you that the, the lymphatic system are going to travel from the feet to the heart against gravity. That is the direction of the lymphatic fluid, okay? Now, the lymphatic fluid is not blood. I'm not going to write down this, please. The lymphatic fluid is not blood. It's not. No, 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 no. No blood. So what is composed of lymphatic fluid are basically water, proteins, some electrolytes, all right? But there is no red blood cells at all. Is that clear? Okay. All right, so here we have, uh, let me see. Here we have uh, how they're going to be transport the lymphatic fluid. All right, so let me just organize this. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Okay. All right, so what are the functions of the lymphatic system? The functions of the lymphatic system are going to be three. I'm going to put it here. Functions of lymphatic system. The function of the lymphatic system will be number one. Ab reabsorb excess of water. Reabsorb excess of fluid, excess of water in the tissues. If you remember, we have the capillaries, arter arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, uh, veins. In the capillaries is where it's coming out the, the water. It's coming out the water. If there's an excess of water because of that proximity, no direct connection with the lymphatics, that excess of water will be collected by the lymphatic system in order to prevent edemas that is one of the of the functions of the lymphatic system number two are going to transport immune cells transport and contain by the way uh, uh lymphocytes lymphocytes we are located in the lymphatic nodes how many lymphatic nodes we have 900 about we're mostly located in the flexures of the body the RP, the inguinal area, or around the IVC aorta. And the entry of each organ, there is a lot of lymphatics. The breast, when somebody has breast cancer, they're going to basically have a, a this, uh, enlargement of the lymphatic nodes. Why? Because cancers are mutations. Mutations of the normal cells. Mutation of the normal cells, mutation of what? Of the gene. Mutation of the gene means a different recipe, different recipe for a protein. 
So these produce protein. And this actually, as part of the cancer cells, are going to be not recognized by the immune system. And the immune system start to fight against these cancer cells. Those are, they were normal, but they mutate and they become abnormal now. So, yeah, so they're going to fight as they are like with fighting as like with the bacteria. So that's why the lymphatic nodes in cancers can be can be basically enlarged. And number three, what is number three? Transport, oh, transport fats and some proteins. Okay. All right, so these three functions need to be known very well. Okay, so here we have the distribution of the, the, the recollection of the lymphatic system. They're going to collect the lymphatic, the lymphatic fluid. The collection of the lymphatic fluid are going to be in this, <clears throat> in this way. Just please raise your left arm, and that is your left side. So all, basically, your left side, half of your head, left side of the head, left side of your neck, left side of your thorax, all the, all the, uh, all the, um, uh, 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 everything, but no, the upper extremity, the right upper extremity, or the right side of your head or neck, all this on the left below, that is actually 75%. So that is the area that is being collected, the lymphatic system, towards a point that we are going to see that now. The other 25% is here, 25, and this is 75%. 75%, and this is 25%. All right, so how they are going to drain? Look at this. So first of all, I want you to remember this. Look at that. The lymphatic fluid are going to be collected from the feet to the thigh to leg. They're going to go here. They're going to go here. They're going to collect, collect. So all these are going to collect. So this is, you remember, the left and this is your right. So all this, 75% is this. All this. This is 75%. All these are going to drain somewhere here in the subclavian. We are going to see that now. Uh, let me see if I have here. Uh, okay. So here you see here that this is the subclavian vein subclavian in blue so all the lymph all green that you see here is collecting the lymphatic fluid from the lower extremities from the abdomen from the thorax and they are going to drain here they are going to drain into the subclavian vein so if you see here I'm going to show you here look at that here we have this is the this is going to be the heart here there's no drawing here but here we have the, uh, the brachiocephalic veins. This is the right subclavian vein. And this is the left subclavian vein. So what happened, look at this. The, the green is the collection of all the 75% of the lymphatic fluid. That is lymphatic fluid, no blood. And they are going to drain where? Into the vein. All right, so what I want just you to remember at this moment is that the lymphatic fluid are going to drain into the venous system. The rest we are going to talk about in anatomy physiology, more detail. All right, so we have, uh, because you don't know the branches already of the arteries and veins, so they're kind of a little bit a leap here. So I don't want to go on that and force you to do something that you are not familiar with yet. And that is, uh, just remember, the lymphatic fluid is going to drain into the venous system. Into the venous system. Okay. If there is any question, please let me know. Text me. 
and I'm going to post this uh, video. Uh, so you have, you're going to have, you're going to be able with this. Uh, it's going to be available for you in the morning. Well, it's uh, 140 in the morning. So thank you so much. And I will see you soon. And the next time will be Tuesday at nine o'clock for the review. Okay, muchas gracias. See you next time.